the case series of Arnie Burkhart, who was a German pathologist who uh, was just about to retire when COVID hit. And until he unfortunately passed away last spring, did a series of 75 autopsies on, uh, I think mostly Germans, but mostly Europeans uh, in any event, who passed away within uh, some number of uh, uh, weeks or months after mRNA vaccination. And his findings are really, really amazing. Uh, one, because they're so rare, we should have been seeing this all over the world. Um, but two, what did he find? So among the, of the 75, 31 of them uh, had been broadly judged as cardiac deaths, but vaguely so. They weren't uh, in-depth autopsies. Uh, and so he did a more in-depth autopsies and found that in all 31 of those cardiac deaths, he thought that they were vaccine-induced. He found uh, killer lymphocytes. He found spike protein in the damaged heart. Now, of those 31, he found 16 were basically microvascular damage uh, with stenosis and dissection. And 15 of those 31 were myopericarditis. Um, uh, among the uh, 16 of microvascular damage, five of them were aortic dissection. So the aorta is the largest artery that comes out of the top of your heart. And if that ruptures, that's very, very bad news. Um, and we've actually seen a lot of these. Um, so, you know, these were most, uh, not all, some of them were in their 20s, but mostly the most of them, I think, were in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And this is another example of where uh, autopsies, original autopsies, did not pick up the fact that these probably were caused by uh, vaccine damage. If you look at the entire 75, his findings showed that 21 beyond a doubt and 37 probable were caused by the mRNA vaccine. So that's 77% of the 75. This is one retired pathologist in Germany who did 75 autopsies and found this evidence. And what does the evidence show? It shows both of the things that we've been talking about the last couple hours. It shows the biodistribution. He found it in the heart, brain, testes, uh, kidneys, adrenals, lungs, liver, et cetera, et cetera, large and small blood vessels all around the body. And he found the lymphocytic uh, infiltration and damage. Um, so this is a huge, uh, you know, a large case series proving the points we've been, we've been talking about. Yeah. So just to translate the lymphocytic infiltration, that's white blood cells. We've been talking about T cells killer cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells, both lymphocytes that uh, are consistent with what this pathologist found invading the tissues that had caused the deaths of these patients shortly after vaccination. So while I suppose one could imagine some other explanation that would cause all of those pieces of evidence to align by some other mechanism, it is hard to imagine what it would be. We have powerful evidence. The hypothesis that I put forward makes predictions. These pieces of evidence are um, those predic predictions manifest in autopsies of a significant number of patients and a large fraction of those studied. So that does suggest that the pathologies, that relevant pathologies are downstream of the exact mechanism in question. And what it should do is it should shift the burden of proof to those who believe that the vaccines are not at fault. They would need to establish that there was some other explanation for the pattern of evidence that is otherwise clearly indicative that they are. Is that a fair summary, you believe? 
absolutely. I mean, the amount of evidence, again, at the micro and the macro, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a second, is uh, overwhelming. And, and the, the lack of a response from health authorities, people in leadership positions around the world has been, uh, I guess, disappointing, you'd have to say. Now, one, if you were a skeptic of Burkhart's evidence or some of the other evidence that we've rolled out, or especially Burkhart's evidence, you could have said, well, maybe there was a selection effect here. Maybe the 75 um, uh, families who uh, offered their loved ones for Burkhart to study uh, uh, had a particular reason to believe this was the case. Uh, maybe if he sa uh, sampled a larger uh, random uh, sampling of uh, Germans, he would have found something different. But that's when you have to go look at the excess mortality and morbidity data from around the world. And here you find that it is consistent with all the evidence that we've been discussing uh, today. So in nearly every single middle income and high income nation around the world, the ones that took lots of mRNA vaccines, you see dramatic spikes beginning in 2021, going through 2023 of cardiac issues, strokes, renal failure, um, uh, and overall excess mortality. And particularly you saw a change in the age structure of who was dying, where of course in 2020 in a lot of nations, older people were dying of COVID. In 2021, we saw a dramatic spike of healthy, young and middle-aged people suddenly succumbing to diseases that they don't normally succumb to in such numbers. And so you can see it in the national databases. You can see it in the life insurance um, actuarial tables. Uh, you can see it in the disability uh, roles in, in many countries. Um, and so again, it is another huge set of macro data reinforcing the micro data, the biological data. And again, the world is a complicated place. The last couple of years have been very complicated between COVID, between lockdowns, uh, between uh, treatments, non-treatments, hospital pro protocols, uh, the vaccines, et cetera. There are lots of different factors here. I'm not saying that this is simple. Um, but when so much evidence aligns from so many different types of data, from so many different directions, from different nations, from private sources, from public sources, uh, uh, you have to, you, you start building a case that is very, very strong and that has not been looked into with anything like what we need for such a, a cataclysmic event. Yeah, I think, you know, there's obviously been a lot made of uh, my invoking Dr. Rancourt's estimate of global vaccine deaths. He, his estimate came out to 17 million, and maybe that number's too high. On the other hand, you know, you're pointing to the complicated nature of recent history and add to that the simple fact that by the logic that we've described here, yes, we have focused on the heart, but we are talking about a, an inoculation that if the argument about damage to the heart, myocarditis and pericarditis is correct, implies that there will be damage to virtually every tissue of the body resulting in a range of pathologies that would be incredibly broad. We're talking about something capable of getting the immune system to attack any tissue in the body that takes up these mRNA transcripts, which could in principle be just about anything. So how do you find that signal when that signal will manifest as an indefinitely large basket of seemingly unconnected pathologies when the powers that be have a strong incentive not to study the obvious question, which is what happens when we compare otherwise similar groups of people who did and did not take the mRNA vaccines? 
It's not a hard question to study if you're willing to pursue that. But to the extent that we were strong armed into accepting these uh, poorly tested, highly novel inoculants, those who induced us to do that do not want to study the simple question of how did people fare who took them versus people who didn't. So that means you're going to have a very complex pattern of pathology, which will, of course, not be easy to diagnose because the real question isn't, uh, you know, anything beyond, well, what happens when you damage every tissue in the body at low percentages? It, it will manifest as something difficult to see because of the number of, of uh, symptoms in question. Yeah, one could argue that we've never seen anything like this before, the range and depth of pathologies. And every story you read in the press, you know, throws out one new explanation after the next, some of them plausible, some of them completely implausible, right? Where when we were having a very large surge of sudden deaths in 21 and 22, especially, you know, there were stories being written in big newspapers around the world of, of you know, uh, too much gardening, um, not eating breakfast, living in the flight path, um, uh, uh, climate change, you know, too much sleep, not enough sleep. And, it, you know, it was it got it was humorous in, in a way. Um, but the 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 range of, of pathologies and the disability numbers require people in leadership positions around the world to investigate and get to the bottom of this. And I would argue if the people that want the mRNA uh, technology and a whole host of biomedical technologies to work in the future, to be trusted in the future, uh, they should want to get to the bottom of this. Um, it, it may not be pretty, but I would argue that it would be better for for them and certainly for people around the world if we do if we do get to the truth yeah i don't see that we have any any choice because there's no other way to reestablish any sort of trust in these systems they have betrayed us um so badly 